dream. You are falling, lost in the listening distance, as dark locks in. <gasps> Nightfall. Good evening. Do you know where your children are? I certainly hope they haven't met the central character in tonight's story. The play from the late night pen of Max Ferguson is called Dark Side of the Mind. I'm Detective McConnell. My men are going to comb every inch of this area, and you really aren't going to be any help to us standing around in the way. So would all of you please get the hell out of here? Uh, I suppose that's no way for a public servant to talk to his employer, Sergeant. But I'm in no bloody mood for niceties. Yeah, I know how you feel. Three murders in ten days. And nothing to go on. Not a shred. There's a whole lot of parents in this city terrified. They're not going to put up with much more of this. Oh, God. That must be the mother. Sergeant, this is going to be rough on her. Don't let her see the bruises that maniac left on the neck. Just uncover the face. That's all we'll need for an ID. Right, sir. Ma'am? Ma'am? Could you come this way, please? My name is McConnell. I'm sorry to have to ask you to do this. Would you just let us know one way or the other? Take me to her. Where is she? Sergeant? Yes, sir. Right over here, ma'am. Oh, my God. Oh, no. It can't be. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I, wish, I, I wish there was something I could say to help. I, no. I'll have someone drive you home. No, no. All right, Sergeant. Okay, men, let's go. Five feet apart. To the far side of the ravines and backtrack. We're going to keep at it till we find something. Refusing to divulge any details, he told reporters that the three slayings which have shaken this community in the past 10 days appear to have been committed by the same person. Meanwhile, funeral services for the tiny... That just makes me sick. Yeah, please. Well, I'm sorry, honey. I'm just upset and I'm angry. Oh, all are, dear, but I don't think that I can't that think of that child without being disgusted by the whole human race. I'm afraid I gave up on the human race a long time ago, Jeff. Look, there's one very sick mind out there somewhere. Nobody's denying that. But let's not dump on the you're whole right, honey, world. You're right, honey. And besides, I thought this little dinner was supposed to be a happy reunion. After all, we haven't seen Carl in, what, 15 years? 15 years, Carl. Can you believe it? <laughs> That's a lot of water under the bridge, Jeff. <laughs> Picture this, Verna. Yesterday afternoon, right? Busy mm -hmm. Saturday, corner of Portage and Maine, wall-to-wall -wall people, and I spot this guy. <laughs> well, I should hope you wouldn't forget that handsome star quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> University. Oh, that's a long time ago, Myrna. Uh, Carl, why don't you stay over? Huh? One more day. Oh, yes, Carl, that's a great idea. N no, no. Um, thanks all the same, but I've got to fly out tonight. 
got a board meeting in Vancouver at oh. nine tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the limousine will be here in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to stay, really, I would. It's just that... Uh, yeah, well, well, let's hope it won't be another 15 years before we see you again. Oh, we're sure to bump into each other on some street corner. Bring your wife next time. I'd love to meet her. I doubt it. What? You mean you, you, you doubt you'll be able to bring her or that we'd love to meet her? <laughs> Either way, Myrna. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Carl was telling me when you were out in the kitchen, Myrna, that uh, his wife is a dead ringer for you. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Jeff... Uh, I didn't expect you to tell, Myrna. <laughs> Come on, girl. It's not classified, is it? No, it's just that uh, I don't think it's particularly flattering for a woman to find that she's a carbon copy of another woman. Carl, really? That doesn't bother me at all. Well, then, maybe it should. Who's for more coffee? Carl? Please. Jeff? No, I'm fine, dear. That's fine, Emily. Emily? Myrna. I'm sorry. Myrna. Carl, my strong resemblance to your wife, does it bother you somehow? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it's been a hectic couple of weeks in Winnipeg, trying to track people down, <laughs> close deals, partying too late. Uh. <laughs> I guess I'm just a bit exhausted and cranky. Well, look, we, we've got an hour before you have to leave for the airport, so why don't we just take our coffee into the living room where it's more comfortable and put your feet up. Mm, I might be able to scrape up some brandy. Maybe a little Grand Marnier, Carl? Hmm? Brandy for me, Jeff. Mm, okay, how about you, dear? I'll pass. Jeff was telling me you two lived in England for a couple of years. Is that right? About seven or eight years ago. Jeff had been practicing here in Winnipeg after he got out of dental school, and then he decided to specialize, so off we went. Oh, we both loved London. Oh, the cost of living. And when his courses ended, we flew right back to good old Winnipeg. <laughs> good old Winnipeg. Oh, Carl, I know what you're thinking, but these dreadful murders could have happened anywhere. I mean, we don't have a monopoly on psychopaths. Maybe not, love, but I'll bet you Carl's really his kids are in Vancouver right now. I would be if I was a parent. Well, does it really make any difference? Wherever life has lived, you can't avoid its rottenness. Oh, Carl, come on now. No, I mean it, Myrna. Now, you notice it more when you get older. The optimism of youth starts to erode. Well, for better or worse, Carl, we can't turn the old clock back. Cheers. Cheers. Unless those boys in the lab come up with the secret of eternal youth. That's huh? it. Make <laughs> time stand still. Childhood could go on forever. Oh. <laughs> the innocence and sweetness of childhood. Never having to end in heartbreak. Well, like I say, Carl, you gotta be patient. It might take another year or two. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have to. To achieve perpetual childhood. Well, I, I don't know about you two, but I find all this philosophy a bit ponderous, especially after a heavy meal. Carl, you haven't told us anything about your kids. How many have you? Pardon? Your children. How many have you? Oh, um, three. Three girls. Oh, how wonderful. Any pictures? Um, yes, yes, I think I have some here. Somewhere. <laughs> Notice the modesty, dear. Yeah. Now, proud fathers are never quite sure whether they have pictures of their kids on them. <laughs> here they are. Oh, Carl, oh. they're adorable. Oh, look, Jeff. Oh, yeah, she's really oh, a look sweetheart. look at these two. Oh, oh, boy, they really oh, are I'd something. I'd just love to have a print sometime, Carl, if you could send us one. Why don't you just hold on to these? Oh, come on. Oh, Carl, no, no, we wouldn't dream of no, taking... No, 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 I insist. I can, uh, I can get more. Besides, I'd kind of like to, well share them. Well, I'm not above tucking them into my pocket and oh, passing them off as my own kids. <laughs> hey, can you just imagine the male hearts they're going to break in a few years' time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mind you, Carl, I don't think they look much like their old man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> Loving, Carl. <laughs> Come on. You know the old put down. <laughs> ah, excuse me a second. I better get that. Oh, Jeff, not tonight of all nights. Oh, for life before the invention. Hello? 
Dr. Robbins? Yes? Doctor, it's Mrs. Walters. I I'm really sorry to have to call you at home, but my five-year-old has had a raging toothache. Uh, she's been crying all afternoon. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but, uh... Well, actually, I do have company, Mrs. Walters. Uh, have you tried oil of cloves? Yes, and, and I've rubbed alcohol around the tooth, but neither seems to work. Could you possibly do, do anything for her? All right, Mrs. Walters, uh, bring her to my office. I'll head over now. I should be there in about 15 minutes. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Robbins. I, I feel so badly about That's all right, you. Mrs. Walters. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Oh, the joys of dentistry. I've got to go, I'm afraid. Oh, Jeff, is it really that urgent? I'm afraid so, honey. Carl, look, I should be back in about an hour. There's any chance you'll still be Sorry, here? Jeff. I'll have to leave in about 30 minutes myself. Well, old man, it's been great seeing you again. I huh? enjoyed it, Jeff. Thanks for everything. And we won't let another 15 years go by, all you right? You bet. You uh -huh. bet. See you, Jeff. Well, I'll be back as soon as I can make it, dear. Jeffrey, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, sorry, dear. <laughs> Love you. Hurry back, sweetheart. Kisses and sweet talk. Much simpler just to say goodbye. <laughs> Okay, Jenny, I think that'll do the trick. Here, rinse your mouth. Gee, didn't even hurt. <laughs> now, you remember what I told you, Janie. You brush up and down, not back and forth. And if you do that twice a day, I won't have to see you again for at least... Uh-oh, down you get. Now, who knows I'm here at this hour of night. All right, where you go, Janie. Uh, I'll brush him every day. You tell your mom I can't chat right now. I've got to get this phone. Hello? Jeff? Yes, who's this? Brace yourself. It's Kitty Anderson. Kitty! Oh, this is tremendous. Where the heck are you? I, I just flew in 20 minutes ago. I'm still at the airport. Pride some mad money out of John. I've got three wild days in the big city. Oh, boy. Wait till Myrna hears this. Have you called her yet? The second I got off the plane. But there's no answer, so I had to track you down through the yellow pages. Now, what are you doing at the office this time of night? <laughs> a little emergency. I'm just getting ready to leave. Well, serves you right for being a big, soft-hearted... Uh, Kitty, spot. um... <laughs> Did you say there was no answer at the house? Yeah, tried twice. The phone just rang. Well, I can't understand that unless Myrna's in the bathroom. She's certainly home. Ah. I left there less than an hour ago. She was having coffee with... Hey, 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 hey. Yes. It's your turn to race yourself. Well, I'm braced. Okay, now go back about 15 years. Uh -huh. We're all at the University of Toronto together. Mm -hmm. Now, who's the big, handsome, number one heartthrob on campus? Oh, come on, Jeff. There were dozens of those. Yeah, yeah but this one used to take you out, if I remember correctly. Now, sounds conceited, Jeff, but that's still not much of a clue. All-round super jock. Oh, come on, Jeff. I'm dying to know. Star quarterback of the varsity blues. Ta-da! Jeff, are you joking? Not a bit. Carl Langford is alive and well and having coffee in my living room. <laughs> hey, Kitty, you still there? Um, I'm still here, Jeff. A little stunned, mind you. <laughs> Ghosts out of the past always do this to Oh, me. I know what you mean. Yesterday I was standing at Portage of Maine. Jeff, and... sorry to interrupt, but... But, well, this is a pay phone, and people are getting impatient. Well, well, will you do me a favor? Sure thing. Well, I, I hate to ask this, Jeff, but I can I can see about a hundred people all heading out to the limousine pickup. Oh, Kitty, I'm embarrassed. Why didn't I think of it? Forget the limousine. Of course I'll drive you in. And Jeff? Yeah? W would it be out of your way to bring Myrna out with you? Kitty, if you drew a straight line from my office here out to the airport, it would practically pass through my living room. Of course I'll bring oh, her. Oh, that's great. Can't wait to see her. And you. Well, it'll work out nicely. You two can get all the women talk out of the way in the back seat coming in from the airport, and then when we get home, the three of us can have a damn good visit, huh? <laughs> Don't tell her I'm in town, Jeff. Well, let's surprise her at the airport. Oh, she'll be pumping me all the way. <laughs> you know what Myrna's can like. Can you leave now, Jeff? Well, sure. You head over to the Air Canada Information Desk, and you give me five minutes to tidy up here. Now, and Jeff, then please, could you leave right away? Well, yeah, I guess I can. Have I got time to put my coat on? I'm, I'm sorry, Jeff. It's just that, well, well, this place is so darn stuffy and crowded. Now, well, I just appreciate it. Kitty, I'm going out the door now. Oh, thanks, Jeff. You're a lifesaver. Lifesaver?
I'm home. Marna? Anybody home? Hmm. That's odd. Carl's coat's gone. Well, but Myrna wouldn't have gone with him. Are you in, Myrna? I'm upstairs, darling. Oh, did Carl get away all right? Carl left for the airport. I've got to find some place open to pick up some cigarettes. Uh, you in the mood for a drive? Hmm? Myrna? I've just washed my hair. Honey? Oh, damn. Ah, oh, what the heck. She'll be just as surprised when she sees Kitty coming through the front door. <laughs> okay, dear, I won't be long. Excuse me, I was supposed to meet a young lady at the desk here. Would you know if there's a message for Dr. Robbins, Dr. G.H.? Jeff, Jeff, over here. Kitty! Hey, how are you? Gee, you're certainly looking... Jeff, where's Myrna? Well, now, Kitty, that's a long story. <laughs> I just figured I might never get another chance to step out on the town with a gorgeous... Jeff, I'm serious. Will you please tell me where Myrna Kitty, is? Kitty, just relax, Sorry. huh? I drove straight home after I talked to you, and I tried to trick Myrna into coming under the pretext of getting cigarettes, mm -hmm. only to find out she just washed her hair. Oh. So do I blow the whole surprise, or do I sneak out here and bring you back myself? Hmm? Well, hell, I thought I'd made the right choice. Sorry, Jeff. Oh, sure you made the right choice. Uh, is Carl still at your place? No, I'm afraid not. In fact, he's probably out here right now. Might even bump into him. Jeff, will you take my bag? I want to get the hell out of here. Now, hold it, Kitty. Now, I've been getting some really strange vibes. Is something bugging you? Jeff, I've been uptight all evening, ever since I talked to you on the phone. Hey, <laughs> that's flattering. I can't explain it here. Come on. Let's get into your car and back to your place. Well, am I ever going to learn what this deep dark... In this car, Jeff, in the car. And I sure hope you've got some cigarettes. We're both going to need them. <laughs> What's all this about? It's about Carl. Oh, my God, Jeff. How can you possibly not have heard? Seven years ago, it was on the front page of just about every newspaper in Canada. Myrna and I were out of the country seven years ago, living in England. Now, what the hell are you talking about, Kitty? Seven years ago, Carl Langford was committed for an indefinite period to the mental institution at Penetanguishene. Penet? Well, that place is for the criminally insane. That's right, Jeff. Carl murdered Emily, his wife. Kitty, is this some kind of a sick joke? I only wish it were, Jeff. All of us who knew Carl were stunned. The trial was ghastly. Went on for more than a month. Now, wait a minute. I'm still trying to grasp all this. It's unreal. I know, Jeff. You remember the Carl we all knew at university. Yeah. Oh, something terrible must have happened to him. It may have begun when they lost their little girl. Ah, oh, I, I didn't know about that either. That was about a year earlier. His wife had been out for the afternoon with some of her girlfriends for a couple of cocktails. Well, she might have had one too many, I don't know. But anyway, she left the bar, picked up the little girl at school to drive her home and... An accident? Drove into a bus. Not a scratch on Emily, but the little girl was thrown out. Struck her head against the curb. Oh, my God. She was dead when they got her to hospital. Coral must have taken that pretty hard. He really went to pieces, that's... This all came out of the trial. Carl started drinking heavily, turned completely against his wife. It must have been pretty awful for... for Emily. Terrible! Not many mothers could bear being accused of murdering their child. Carl did that? He never let up, drunk or sober. He even called her a murderer in front of their friends. It's hard to believe. Well, I guess things got more and more desperate for about a year. Drinking getting heavier, the fight's getting worse. Carl's mind's disintegrating. 
Finally, one night, he took a carving knife and slashed her throat. Oh. Oh, mother of God. I'm sorry, Jeff. Did Carl turn himself in? No. They didn't... They didn't find her body until almost a month later. What? Nobody even knew she was dead. Her mother would phone. Carl would explain that his wife was in the shower under the hairdryer getting dressed. Emily's mother came round to the house several times only to have an apologetic Carl tell her his wife was out shopping, visiting a friend. <sighs> Incredible. Oh, it gets sicker than that, Jeff. What do you mean? Well... After about a month of this strange runaround, Emily's mother became suspicious and the police were called in. What did they find? They talked to her. To Carl's wife? Yes. Carl met them at the door. The police explained that they wanted to speak with his wife. Carl was very polite and cooperative. He went upstairs to get her. The next thing the police knew, Emily was calling down from upstairs that the whole thing was outrageous. She was in her bath, but if they wanted to come up and take a peek, they were quite welcome, provided they didn't mind being sued for invasion of privacy. The Kitty, you just said all this happened after she'd been murdered. I, I, I don't understand. Well, you're no more confused than the police were, Jeff. They were both backing out the front door in total embarrassment when one of them decided to take Emily up on her invitation. He got to the top of the stairs, and, and there was Carl in one of the bedrooms... Operating a tape recorder. Oh, God. He pre-taped her voice. Must have forced her to do it. Just before he killed her. I can't believe it. There were enough sentences in the tape to cover dozens of situations. Oh, what a crazy, demented... The sad thing is that when they lost their little girl, they didn't try to have more children. It was a tragedy, but perhaps if they'd gone ahead and Kitty, had another... Kitty, Kitty, she wasn't their only child. What? Carl has three children, three little girls. Yes, I know for a fact there was only one. But Carl sat right in my living room early this evening talking about his three... Hey, wait a minute. Jeff, what is it? For God's sake, they're here, right in my jacket pocket. Carl wanted me to have them. Have what? Three snaps, one of each daughter. Now, here, take a look. Uh, there's a flashlight in the glove compartment. Here. Yeah. Jeff, believe me, Carl had one little girl, Anne, who died... A year later, he was committed to penetanguishing indefinitely. So he must have been let out only recently. If he was let out... Oh, my God, Kitty. You're not suggesting... Jeff, that... Carl is a murderer. They just couldn't have released him that soon. You wouldn't expect so. And why did he lie about those photographs? Could it possibly be... Oh, no. What, Jeff? Kitty, on the front page of the free press today, there's a shot of a little girl. They found her body in a field just outside the city, the third child in ten days. Oh, dear God. Carl was lying about those snaps. That little girl in the paper. Oh, Kitty, I feel sick. Jeff, are you suggesting that... I'm not the... suggesting anything, Kitty. I just know that I've got to get home fast. Just a sec, Kitty. I, I don't want Myrna to know anything about this just yet. I understand. We could be totally wrong, and there's no point scaring the hell out of her with a false alarm. <laughs> uh, the light's still on in the bedroom upstairs. I don't think she's come down yet. Well, why don't we ease in quietly and get that paper? Right. Myrna. Myrna? Oh, thank God she's still upstairs. Come on, the paper's over here on the table. Now then, I'll just take Carl's snapshot and I'll put it beside... Oh. oh, God. Jeff, it is. It's the same little girl in both pictures. Yeah. Oh, God. Jeff, did, does, does this mean that Carl... Killed the other two. Yeah, I'm afraid it looks that way. Oh, no. Um, 
I'll call the police. You sit down, Kitty. Try to relax. I'll phone right. the cops. Uh, then we'll call Myrna down. Uh, do you want to pour three stiff ones? Oh, sure. Let her enjoy the surprise and, and, and then just try to break it to her as gently as we can. Here goes. His poor parents. Such sweet kids. And he took their pictures before he did it. One Division, Sergeant Wayne. Uh, yes, this is uh, Dr. Robbins speaking. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Robbins? Yes, sir. I, um, I want to report some information. I think it could lead to the arrest of the, uh, of the man who... Uh, who um, Go ahead, sir. Uh, who murdered the, the three little girls. Just a moment, Dr. Robbins. Ron, can you pick this up on line three? Go ahead, Doctor. Well, it's hard to know where to start. The man in question, sir, do you have his name? Yes, yes, uh, his name is... I'm upstairs, darling. Jeff, Myrna's heard us. Carl left for the airport. Oh, dear God, no. Jeff, what's wrong? <laughs> sir, do you have the man's name? I'm upstairs, darling. Oh, my God. No. No, the tape recorder! Carl left for the airport. Hello. Hello, what's going on? <laughs> Dear God. He's still up there. Carl's still up there. I'm upstairs, darling. Oh, no. Carl left for the airport. <laughs> <laughs> have just heard Dark Side of the Mind by Max Ferguson. Tonight's cast featured Wayne Robson as Jeff, Patricia Collins as Myrna, Denise Ferguson as Kitty, and Peter Dvorsky as Carl, with Ann Butler, Maya Anderson, Larry Reynolds, and Alan Rosenthal. Audio engineering was by Brian Wood, assisted by David Hoyle. Matt Wilcott handled sound effects with the production assistance of Nancy McElveen. Our story editor is Earl Toppings. Dark Side of the Mind was produced and directed by John Douglas, and the coordinating producer of Nightfall is Bill Howell.